Welcome everyone to today's presentation on bioaccessibility and extractability of Ecobon Lead Defender treated lead-based paint. My name is Eric Karanama and I will be your host today. I am joined by Dr. Nicholas Basta, Professor of Soil and Environmental Health, Environmental Chemistry at Ohio State University and Mr. Paul Barthel, representative with Ecobon Environmental Paints. Welcome gentlemen. Thank you. Dr. Basta, and Mr. Barthel will go through the presentation and following con the conclusion, we will take a few questions. With that, I will turn it over to Dr. Basta and Mr. Barthel. Okay, thank you, Eric. So, okay. So, I'm glad to be here to talk to, about a study uh, that we did to evaluate the effectiveness of EcoBond Defender on lead paint bioavailability. So my expertise is to look at, treat, I do a lot of research on about assessment and treatment and remediation of lead and other heavy metal contaminated media. Um, uh, so myself and my research associate, Shane Whitaker and uh, MT2, uh, were involved with this project. I want to give you a little background. Um, we have a lead problem. We have a public health crisis in Cleveland, aside from COVID. We have a long historical excessive blood level, blood level in children in Cuyahoga County, which is Cleveland. And we've had it for a very long time. You can see here the excessive blood levels defined as greater than five microgram per deciliter by CDC, and in Cuyahoga County, 13.1% of toddlers, zero to five years old, have excessive blood lead. This is a very high number. Nationwide, this number is in single digits. If you actually look at the city of Cleveland, it goes higher, almost 18%. And this and that, that's basically, this is East Columbus in the city of Cleveland. These numbers, where is this lead coming from? It's coming from mainly indoor house dust from lead paint. There is some outdoor contamination too from lead, and that's also from lead paint. But the indoor house dust is much greater than the outdoor. So this is the story that every old industrial city faces. Uh, the, the legacy of lead paint and lead paint exposure. Um, whether it's inside the home, ingestion, uh, uh, this, this little girl uh, peeling and maybe eating the lead paint on their walls or windowsills, chewing on the windowsills or peeling the windowsills, or anybody who's ever had to paint a house knows this part. The first thing you have to do is scrape. So what we find is the highest amount of lead outside is right along the hole. In fact, it goes up to 10,000 ppm in the soil right around the drip line of the house. Um, so very, very significant source. Okay, so the risk driver for lead exposure is well documented. It's incidental or accidental, if you will, ingestion of dust or soil dust, dust from soil. So essentially it's Ingestion, if it's inhaled, most of the particles go down to the stomach. Um, it, the paint or the dust is dissolved in the stomach. And then the question is, does it get into your blood? The risk, the exposure risk from ingesting lead is associated with the bioavailability of the lead. So this exposure equation is the chronic daily intake of blood uh, of contaminant, in this case lead, being absorbed into the blood. Meaning lead hurts you, for lead to hurt you, it has to be absorbed through your intestinal wall into your blood, into your circulation, and then it can do damage. If it passes right through, it has very little damage. So this equation actually calculates that chronic daily intake. And the key, exposure term in here is called relative bioavailability. Relative bioavailability, it can go from zero to one. Zero, one meaning all of the lead 
that was dissolved by your stomach gets absorbed into your blood, 100%. Zero means none of the lead gets absorbed into your blood. If you have none, none of the lead absorbed in your blood, you don't get the risk. So really the issue is what we work with is lower RBAs reduce the exposure and risk associated with soil ingestion. So if we can reduce that risk and exposure, the, the RBA, then we can reduce the danger and the risk associated with lead ingestion. Just to let you know, what's the availability of uh, lead paint? What's the RBA? It's almost one. Almost 100% of lead paint will dissolve in the stomach and be absorbed into the blood. So it's a very, very high amount. Okay. All right. So we always say RBA is a very specific thing. And so when actually people are, are working in risk assessments, whether they're risk assessors or toxicologists, they will actually make an adjustment for the RBA of the material on the site. So if they're in a Superfund site or contaminated site, they can actually adjust their exposure assessment, figure out how much risk to the children from the dust on this site. And RBA is right here. This is where the adjustment is made. So if they actually analyze the dust in that site and the RBA is 40%, they could actually use that as a default, a lower amount to calculate risk. Our research, we tend to try to decrease this RBA and give the risk assessors some data that they could use to quantify the reduction in risk to children from treatments, okay? Uh, there's a, a second technique that assessors actually, risk assessors can use several ways of the, of the data that we provide, uh, they can do reference dose adjustment instead of actual exposure. But the idea is right here to these children to determine the RBA, give them that data so they could use it for adjusting the risk at their site. Okay. So one of the best Historically, over the last 40 years, the best products that we find to reduce the lead exposure in RBA are phosphorus-containing materials. Phosphorus reacts with uh, lead to actually form a, a compound called lead chloroformiromorphite. So this is a calcium phosphate hydroxyapatite material in bone meal. The phosphorus here in the bone meal, this structure, reacts with the lead to form this new mineral, this new green colored mineral, it's called lead chloropyromorphite. Lead chloropyromorphite is very insoluble. So if you ingest lead chloropyromorphite, a very small percent gets dissolved in the stomach and is absorbed and so because of that, very little gets absorbed into the bloodstream. So the idea is to take something like, uh, has a high RBA like lead paint, treat it with a phosphate treatment, make lead chloropyromorphite. And if that treated paint is ingested, it does not dissolve in the GI tract in very, or most of it, and very little gets absorbed into the blood. Uh, we can actually show you the chemistry behind this. Um, I don't want to bore you too much with the chemistry, but these are all the common lead minerals that you could actually form in your stomach or in, even in the environment. Uh, here's lead carbonate and lead oxide. Lead oxide is commonly found in paint. It's used in the base of paint. And with time, that lead oxide becomes lead carbonate. It absorbs CO2 from the air, becomes lead carbonate. And as we all know that what happens when a carbonate hits stomach acid? Well, we all learned that in high school chemistry, didn't we? When they had you put acid on seashells and it fizzes. It dissolves it completely. So lead carbonate dissolves completely. 
So what we do here is we basically take something that has high lead solubility, lead carbonate, treat it to make this new mineral, black chloropyromorphite, which has low solubility. So if you put this in a acidic condition, it's not, it's going to be, it won't dissolve. The other thing I wanted to point out, when we look at diagrams like this, geochemists look at diagrams like this, usually the bottom line is stable in the environment. So the mineral with the lowest line is the most stable. And notice which mineral has the lowest line of all the lead minerals. This one, chloroform morphite. So when people say to me, well, what, what is it going to turn into? It's not, it's stable. And Dr. Shekel and Ryan at US EPA, a lot of research. Dr. Shekel, a lot of work years ago, but he's done more probably than anybody has on this, showing that these lead pyromorphite Minerals are stable. We've done work to show they're stable. Uh, they last more than 10 years. In fact, they seem to become more stable with time. Paul? All right, thanks, Nick. Okay, uh, understanding the options short of uh, demolition, um, the average consumer is left with um, some alternatives, but typically when encountering hazardous lead, the end user, be it commercial or the average uh, do-it-yourselfer is left with few options. Consider this, depending on the project scope, the average home abatement project can cost between 10 to $14,000, straining the homeowner, leaving little options. So I, I wanna actually reverse this slide and uh, look down at the bottom category first, if you will, before talking about EcoBond <clears throat> and the technology. Your standard, looking at the bottom, your standard latex paint, which does nothing to the lead on the substrate other than provide on average four to six mils of a barrier, mind you, between the host and the actual harmful lead. Consider this, when using a micrometer to measure thickness, is not much thicker than a few sheets of paper. That's what separates your child from the lead on the wall, the windowsill um, that they look out every day um, peering outside. Uh, next is the, uh, on the uh, list is paint strippers. If you have ever used one, they are found to be time consuming, most times requiring the user to come back after there's a chemical interaction with the lead. And who knows how many VOCs dangerous VOCs are within those strippers uh, that you're using. They're also messy, they're gloppy, and leave you with hazardous lead waste after you remove that lead uh, with the actual stripper itself, which is still considered toxic. So what do you do with that waste? Next, we got encapsulates. While there are a wide variety of capsules available on the market, by far are the most expensive of all choices barring full demolition abatement of the structure or walls, what have you, um, in, in question. Their coverage rate is poor, while most times requires two or more coats, offering no guarantee that it will last more than 20 years on a poorly prepared substrate. In addition, if you encounter peeling, flaking, or chipping conditions, that surface will have to be prepared will not, while I'm not aware of any encapsulate that can be applied over uh, such poor conditions. So you're still going to have to prepare that substrate when you encounter those poor conditions prior to applying um, the encapsulate. I'm going to get to the benefits of EcoBond now, why it's important that you can use both EcoBond as your leave-on application and for removal practice when you do encounter those types of conditions. So here we are, the last category at the top is EcoBond. This is what Nick has been talking about. As demonstrated by Professor Basta it, in his impartial impartial and objective study. Not only does EcoBond render the waste byproduct as non-hazardous for disposal, yet more importantly, it reduces the bioaccessibility, protecting those occupants slash workers applying the product and so forth. So you, you got reduced liability at the same time. This obviously is huge when compared to those other options that I just went over. And then of course is the coverage rate. Two or three times more uh, over the surface area, in addition to lower cost for the product. Moving on to the next slide, 10. I'll, I'll glaze over this. I, like Nick said, I don't want to bore you too much. Um, 
<clears throat> the additional benefits, reduces lead hazards up to 95%, suppresses the airborne lead dust particulates up to 99% and, and can also be used for removal during approved blast removal. You notice I said approved blast removal or when encountering peeling or chi uh, chipping uh, when having to prep a surface. This of course, um, when following, this of course using lead safe practice rules. We always abide and, and suggest using lead safe practice rules in conjunction with when using EcoBond. Next, it reduces the lead bioavailability. That's what we've been talking about up to 85%. That's cost effective. You see there it's less than 35 cents per square foot for the product plus application. And here's a big one. Uh, a lot of homeowners like this. It includes the Bitrix. Uh, most people know what Bitrix is. We put that in uh, into the resin. It's a bitter additive to further discourage oral consumption, not only with children, but anyone coming into contact, including pets. Mm. Next is uh, the improved uh, hiding and, uh, and coverage, uh, not only treating the lead, but covers blemishes and many imperfections that you might find on a wall scuff marks, um, things of that nature. It's not a filler quite, but it, it hides a lot of those scuff marks and um, imperfections that you might find on a wall. Um, fire and mold, mildew resistant. It's for interior, exterior use. Um, very low VOCs, that's, mo that's really important. It's water-based green product approved for even use in those states with uh, high regulatory VOC thresholds where they demand that products have uh, um, zero or uh, very little um, VOC content. Uh, the protects against acid rain and water leaching. It has excellent adhesion. It can be tinted and of course, as discussed, renders lead waste as non-hazardous for disposal. Slide 11. The next common question that we often hear is, well, how does it work? Nick's gone over that basically, but basically what we have done is taken a high quality acrylic latex paint, adding a patented proprietary treatment reagent to the already high solid resin, in addition to adding penetrants and softeners to help with the bonding and adhesion. So that's basically uh, what's inside the actual paint itself. Slide 12. And here's the listing of product availability in, a, in addition to directly uh, purchasing from EcoBond uh, Direct. Uh, EcoBond has been used not only here in the States, but several countries, including Central America for the canal authorities in Canada. In, the, in those far remote areas where contractors are required to haul the hazardous waste hundreds of kilometers, they can now dispose of locally and save upwards of eight times cost and hazardous disposal fees. Uh, it's used on bridges, water towers. Uh, we've used it in power plants, water treatment facilities, transmission towers, and uh, proudly in many health departments. Um, and then of course the do it yourself or the mom at home who has children or, or, or someone who wants to protect their family. So with that, I hand it back to uh, Nick uh, with slide 13. Okay, uh, so this is a, a study that we did, a small study to evaluate what would happen if EcoBond treated paint was ingested. How does it affect the bioavailability? And so the methods were to start with lead bit, uh, a leaded paint sample, oil-based artist paint. Um, it was applied over a 1,400 centimeters squared area. Uh, and then there was uh, painted, the lead paint was repeated until there was 50 grams of paint applied to this one area. Uh, then on top of that, eco bond was applied in three coats for a thickness of 0.018 inch. Okay, so that was the, so we had the untreated paint and then some of the paint was treated with EcoBond this way. Okay, so we had treated and untreated samples. Uh, we then did size reduction. What is, let me explain what size reduction is. Uh, we then did what would, would have been considered the worst case scenario, which is we took the paint and ground it to a point where it could be ingested. So size fraction. So, so we're talking about a case where a child would not only just eat a little paint, they would eat all the paint off the wall. Or eat all the paint that was treated with EcoBond and see what happens. 
Uh, we used a variety of test methods to evaluate how well the EcoBomb worked. Uh, for reducing lead, we used a T-clip, a toxicity characteristic leaching procedure, standard EPA method that's usually used, uh, associated mainly a lot of times with waste disposal. Uh, synthetic uh, precipitation leaching procedure, uh, this is simulated acid rain that's used to simulate long-term exposure uh, to the elements, many outdoor a lot of times, US EPA 1312. We looked at a water extraction test, which is probably more realistic, um, where we use deionized water instead of SPL3 solution. Uh, but these are the two that are the risk drivers, usually. And actually one of them is the most, this one. This is the ingestion pathway. This is the risk driver. So we use a modified EPA method 1340 that I'll explain a little bit. This is an in vitro laboratory method. It's gone through years and years of research and EPA has issued guidance that this method can be used for by risk assessors to calculate RBA of contaminated soils and dusts. Uh, we also looked at inhalation. We actually used a simulated a test that simulates lung fluid to see how much, if the dust got into the lungs, uh, what the effect the eco bomb would be to decrease the solubility of lead in the lung. The lung, like the uh, gastrointestinal tract, uh, requires the dissolution of the lead for before it gets absorbed. So all these tests were done in triplicate. And now I'll show you some results. So first the water, T-clip, and these are just the partial extraction, acid extractions. So percent of the total lead, uh, you see water extraction of the untreated paint, only 2% of the lead is extracted with water alone, just water. The EcoBond treated, uh, you're way down into 0.0034% extracted, so the reduction of 99% extractability. So it turns the, the water soluble lead into an virtually insoluble water soluble compound. SPLP, 99% reduction, from 1.86%, the total lead in the untreated to less than uh, one tenth of a percent or a hundredth of a percent, 99% reduction. T-clip or TCLP, uh, it's a little more aggressive. 27% of the lead extracted here. In the EcoBond, 0.25%, 98% uh, reduction. And this is probably, Paul, what you were talking about earlier, where you know this material could have been hazardous waste and then treated, it becomes non-hazardous waste. And then they usually uh, use the T-clip to determine hazard versus non-hazardous waste landfills. So now how do we figure this one out? If this child peels the paint off the wall and ingests it, how are we going to measure the effect of this in the eco bond to reduce the lead that gets in her blood? Well, uh, you could do a child trust study. You basically measure the blood lead of children before and after they eat the paint. No, we don't do that. That study is never gonna be done. Instead, what we do is we, we use an approved model, approved by EPA, that comes as close as possible to that child in evaluating what would happen if that child ingested paint or lead-treated paint, okay? And that is juvenile swine. So they've developed the juvenile swine model uh, and they've accepted it for child soil ingestion studies. Now, why swine? Swine and people have very similar GI tracts. So this model was basically, this, this is for small children, young children or young swine. Um, so this has been used, this is an accepted model. It's called the gold standard. Of all the animal models, it's the gold standard. So if you want, to get the bioavailability, how much of that lead will dissolve and get absorbed into the blood. You contact someone who does juvenile swine model studies 
you would give them the treated paint, the untreated paint. Uh, this says per soil, but they would charge you between twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars per sample to give you that bioavailability number. So you'd need at least two samples. Actually, you need more than two because they're going to want control groups and everything else. This could turn very quickly into a half a million dollar study, but you would get a number to evaluate the eco bond. We use pigs because we're very similar to pigs. As Churchill said, dogs look up to us, cats down on us, and pigs treat us as equals. Pigs, even the pharmaceutical industry, our GI tract is so similar to pigs that it is the preferred animal to evaluate what gets absorbed from our GI tract. But we're poor folk at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma, when I was done in Oklahoma State, we were poor folk. We started working on developing this method. We came up to Ohio State University. There, we're pretty poor up here too. <laughs> we can't afford a half a million dollars to test them here. So over the years, internationally, there have been groups, lots of research, including EPA, 20, 25 years of research, thousands of publications to use gastric fluids and see if we could just use the gastric fluid to simulate how much gets absorbed from the gut. And that, that's called IVBA, in vitro bioaccessibility. Bio okay, so what you're doing here is you are, we, have, we know the GI tract well, and we simulate the GI tract and we see my, how much of the paint or the treated paint dissolves, how much of the lead dissolves in the simulated stomach and intestine. Uh, these methods have gained acceptance. They've been improved in vitro methods. Uh, lots of studies, hard studies, where you actually have to show that the in vitro method can predict what would happen in the juvenile swine, the accepted animal model. In fact, it is predictive. So regression equations are, and guidance has been issued that method 1340, which is the EPA in vitro method, can be used instead of the swine model. Okay, so that's great because why? Because it's $6,500 or $100 per sample per test for an IVBA. Now we can afford that. So it's no longer $25 to $50,000 a test for one swine, it's $65 for a sample. Okay, so once this happens, now we can start testing what works and what doesn't work. We can afford it. So here's the results. These are the bioaccessibility. Here's the untreated paint. 73% um, of the total lead, this would be called IVBA, in vitro bioaccessibility, 73% dissolves in the untreated paint, which means you ingest this paint and 73% dissolves in your GI tract and is ready for your small intestine to absorb into the bloodstream, okay? Uh, for the EcoBond treated, 10% dissolves. It's not 100, it's not perfect, but it's 10. And 10 is a huge reduction, it's 86% reduction. Okay, so that means if you ingest the EcoBond treated paint, only 14% of the lead that, uh, for, you're gonna see most of the lead is not going to dissolve. So where, what's going to happen? It's gonna pass through your GI system and through and, and not get absorbed into your blood and not cause harm. Um, when I first saw this, I, I'm very impressed. I work a lot with treatments, a variety of different treatments for many years now, 25 years. We get 50% reduction, we're really happy. 86%, fantastic. And this is the worst case. This is an 86% reduction. If you eat the product, you, you take the, the paint with eco bond paint on top, pick it up and ingest it because we simulate the stomach and the GI tract. We also looked at the lung. We didn't see really much effect in the lung. This was not a significant difference. Uh, it's very little, but it turns out that it's not the risk driver in this case anyway because very little lead gets into your blood 
through the lung pathway. The particles are coarse enough that they actually, even if you inhale them, they get, they wind up being uh, in your stomach. You basically get copy cilia and, or into your stomach. So, so really this is the risk driver. In, inhalation isn't. Um, so to us, it was really low in both cases, but it really didn't matter because it wasn't a risk driver. So the, the most important data here is for children exposure. This is the number right here. 86% reduction. So the conclusion from this study is it's an effective method for reducing the human exposure and risk to lead paint in the indoor environment. And you know, this would work outside too. <laughs> this would also work on that house with the peeling paint. Um, so I guess when you get to this point, this is the Ben study that shows the product works but it's not the field study. And so people, I think actually probably the next study that is probably actually inside the homes, doing a study in the homes where you have treated and untreated uh, lead paint, some with EcoBond, some without EcoBond, and then you have the standard public health monitoring, dust monitoring to quantify the reduction of the exposure. Um, but again, I think the, in absolute terms, I don't think it could get worse than eating all of the paint off the wall. And that's what we've simulated. So it, to me, we can do, I know we, we should do it in the homes, uh, but it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be pretty good because if we can get 86% reduction, assuming ingestion of the paint right off the wall, I don't know, that, that has to be the worst case scenario. So, by the way, we, we do a little plug. We're not just, this isn't what, we're known internationally for this. We run every method that has been accepted for regulatory purposes on five continents in our laboratory. So we get samples from everywhere, all over the place for lead, arsenic, cadmium, metals to evaluate uh, these products, right? And so uh, this is something that, this is our expertise, this is what we do. So with that, I will answer any questions or... Yeah, thank you, Dr. Basta. It does look like we have a, a few questions here. Um, this one looks like it might be for Paul. Uh, why is Ecobon better than that of an encapsulant? Oh, that's a good question. In fact, Nick touched on it. Um, I, I liken it to this. We can wait for... Um, big brother funds to treat a few homes over the course of multiple years, or we can immediately treat millions of homes, treat, mind you, as opposed to just slathering a, uh, a coating over existing lead paint that does nothing to the paint, doesn't reduce the bioaccessibility and wait for these funds, or immediately take care of millions of homes for less cost by treating. Great. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I, I, can I add something? I, sure. Well, we actually do treatment technology. EPA always has two criteria for remediation. One is to reduce the risk. And the second part is forever. And so when we're ever, you know, we, there's a lot of products out there, like Paul just mentioned, uh, in capsule that might provide 20 years, but that's not forever. And so we found out with, the chloroformifor, pyromorphine, see that a few times, is that it is long-term stable. So if we come back in 100, 200 years, it's still going to be chloroformifor, right? So to me, it actually, for us at least, it meets both criteria. It reduces the risk and it's long-term. I don't think your encapsulant does that. It's just, it's, it's a bad time capsule, I guess. <laughs> it just kicks the can 20 years down the road. Great, thank you, Dr. Basta. Uh, we have another one here. If lead paint on a substrate is several layers underneath a latex, mm. will EcoBond still perform? 
that, that's a trickier one because you'd have to diffuse the, the phosphate would have to diffuse through and contact the lead. And so it is possible, you know, that you get some diffusion uh, of the uh, phosphorus through this, uh, the media to the latex to contact the lead. But, you know, I don't think we've, we've never studied that. However, if, if it's all removed and mixed, the reaction would be immediate. So ideally being closest to the lead is what we want but it's been proven and shown with the penetrants and softeners that we've put in the resin um, that it can get down a couple layers of existing lead. Ideally, if it were to come off the substrate, if as long as it's bonding with the lead, even on the front surface, and as you alluded to, were mixed, that reduction would uh, still be uh, taking place, uh, Professor? My right? reaction's milliseconds. Okay. So, you know, phosphorus reacts with lead instantly. So as soon as the contact is made, you get reaction. Very good. Um, will it reduce the bioavailability in children the same as it will in adults? I think it'd work better for children because children, if you look at our gastrointestinal system, absorption of lead and other, almost all of our nutrients and metals, good and bad, happens in our upper small intestine. And, and our upper small intestine works the best at absorbing things when we're young. And so children have the best absorption system. They absorb the most iron, unfortunately the most lead. Uh, as we age, become more adults, uh, our GI tract that isn't as efficient. And so we don't absorb the lead and the, the uh, iron as well. That's why we worry another reason for children is they're going to absorb more lead than adults. So the reduction is going to be pronounced, is going to be felt. So if you get an 86% reduction for a child versus an adult, that's going to have a greater effect than reduction on the child because the absolute amount being absorbed is going to be reduced more. So the 86% is going to be more mass of lead reduced. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Professor, uh, extended chelation doesn't always drive down to EBLs, the elevated blood level. You mean people who actually try to leach the, the lead by chelation? Or correct. They take pills to actually leach the lead out of the bone? Right. Yeah, it, that's a hard one. Uh, if you actually do have lead poisoning and you have to take chelates, you have to take it for 30 days, to basically lead the uh, leach the lead out of the bone, right? Uh, it's you were asking, is that as effective or? I, I don't. Go ahead. I, I think I think what we're trying to do, power power morphite, is we're trying to make put lead in the bone, make a lead bone mineral before it gets into you, rather than letting the lead bone be your bone. It's a lot harder to get it to let out of bone when it's inside of you. Reverse course, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and you know, and people have been through those when we used to have a lot more lead poisoning uh, years ago. Unfortunately, when you know John Hopkins and all these places had uh, clinics for lead poisoning, and uh, children were taking the chelating to try to remove lead. Uh, it's it's hard. It's hard to get the lead out of the blood. You've got to leach it all out of the bone. It's really a hard cut. It's much better to not let it get in the body to begin with. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. It uh, looks like we have one more here. Um, and I know you touched on this already, both Paul and uh, Dr. Basta. How does Ecobon affect the lead? If you can simplify that quickly. Well, I, I'd say the... the uh, Ecobond, the phosphorus in it reacts with it to form this insoluble pyromorphite compound, uh, which then is, holds up a lot of the stable, the stomach acid, not all of it, but most of it, and it reduces the risk if that dust is ingested. Um, 
So that, that's how I see the equal body. I mean, in addition, the pain itself is giving you a physical barrier. But if that barrier was compromised, it really wouldn't matter. What I mean by that in the future is if the paint eroded and it all became dust, whether that be natural or due to a demolition in the future, the bioavailability would still be low in equal bond treated paint. So you wouldn't have, to, because the pyromorphite's stable. So we wouldn't have to worry about exposure if it was released from the wall. Great. Well, gentlemen, do you have anything else you feel you want to add? Well, I'll, I'll add one thing, and that is um, I gave this presentation at the international meeting uh, two years ago, and I had scientists in the audience who were living in very nice developments, uh, gentrified areas, and they didn't realize that they had lead. Well, they knew they had lead paint in the house. But they wanted, when they saw this, they thought this was fantastic. And I think the only thing they needed next was swatches to figure out what color they needed. Because honestly, um, this isn't just treating area, it, it, this is an environmental justice area uh, issue where the lead paint is. But also there's many homes, including the White House, that still has lead paint in it. And so here you got a product that's on the market that you can go buy a few gallons and fix the problem this afternoon. It's fantastic. I mean, and I'm not being paid to say that. I just think there's very few times that we know that there's a, uh, the solution is on the shelf waiting for you. <laughs> but I would like to see, maybe HUD, HUD would be interested in seeing a study that would be uh, with uh, some public health experts, maybe in one of the classical cities that has a lead, excessive blood lead children, um, to show the effectiveness. I think it's a good solution. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Basta and Mr. Barthel, for your presentation. To review this presentation and learn more about how EcoBond can reduce lead hazards, please visit EcoBondPaint.com. Thank you all for your time and hope you enjoyed the presentation.